All right, guys. Today on the show, I've got Ronnie Bincer. He's actually here to talk about Google, Google Plus, and Google Hangouts. Uh, we're actually going to focus this episode entirely on mostly Google Hangouts because uh, that's basically what Ronnie does. And I guess if you want to kind of start out, Ronnie, you know, maybe share your story and how you got into uh, this sort of line of work and anything to do with, uh, I guess, online marketing, internet marketing, uh, video marketing. You bet. Sure. I actually will back up a little to my prior career, which was video SEO, and then show how that led into what I do now with Google Plus and the Hangout tool. Um, I started my online journey a long time ago. I'm trying to remember. I guess when YouTube was about one year old, um, I got involved with what's called video search engine optimization. And the short version of that is my guru trainer guy that taught me everything I know about SEO, search engine optimization. I asked him what's the future for SEO and he said video and I said okay so I moved on to learning about video SEO and when I did that for probably five six years five years at that point I think Google Plus just came out and as an SEO person I anything would do with Google is important to you if you're involved yeah. with SEO or marketing right so they come out with this Google Plus thing and I'm like okay whatever let's see what it is I've been hearing Google talk about social signals for multiple years by that point and that meant to me Facebook you know I, that's my translation of it right and I never could document that it was doing anything I couldn't prove to my customers or, or my clients that the work they did on Facebook could be documentable and so as a result I thought, yeah, the social signal stuff, yeah, whatever. Right. So I'm just telling you my little journey, okay? And so then Google Plus comes out, and I'm thinking, okay, let's check it out, see what we do. So I went into Google Plus. When you know, when I got my invitation, I was trying to get in, trying to get in, and finally got in. I think like uh, a month after it launched or something. And so I'm there, and I'm start doing what I call posting on purpose, meaning I'm posting about things that I know about, like video, search engine optimization. So I'm using keywords appropriately in my titles. You know, this, I, I'm, I'm assuming that some of your listeners already know a lot about SEO, but... I'll, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of varies. I mean, really, um, I'm kind of open to... I'd say at this point the, the audience is fairly open to really anything. I've had some advanced um, interviews so far, and some other folks have come on, and we've um, you know, shared some basic stuff, so really... You know, whatever you'd like to share. So, so the general concept is this. Um, if I know that people look for the words video thumbnails, and I know that's something they're interested in, then when I post about it, I'll say video thumbnails are awesome because of whatever. Or video thumbnails change when you do this. Or video thumbnails are easy to get if. And so you always start with the primary keyword phrase. That's just a standard documented known method that works. Yeah. So I was doing that, and that's what I call posting on purpose. I didn't say, I wonder if I can get any video thumbnails to work. I'd right. start with the keywords first. So I did that probably two weeks. Um, and let me, let me back up for a second. When, you're, when you've been involved in SEO, search engine optimization, you realize that it's a long process. It doesn't necessarily instantly work, and you have Definitely. to build up momentum. I did this in Google Plus for two weeks, and a guy who I really, really uh, value his opinion. He runs the most important video SEO website, period. It's called Real SEO, R-E-E-L-S-E-O.com. The guy that runs that website, his name's Mark. Mark got on the phone and called me and said, hey, Ronnie, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, what do you mean? What am I doing? I'm on the computer. That's what I do. And he said, no, what are you doing? You're taking over all my search phrases that I've been working on for the last five years. What are you doing? And I'm like, uh, I'm just posting stuff on Google+. Plus. I guess it's doing something, huh? And so I got some outside confirmation, let's say, that w from someone who's an expert in that industry that what I was doing was making an impact on search. Now, I could see it, but when you see someone else tell you, that's when it makes a difference. So that only took two weeks. And so it's not rocket science to think that if I'm working on a platform named Google+, Plus, that it might have an effect on Google.com right, right. somehow, right? And so I started doing more and more of that, and I did some of the work for Mark because he said, I need you to do that for me. So I started helping him with his platform, which is called realseo.com, yep. and helped him gain a further 
following, let's say, inside Google Plus, and that's helped him as well. So the, the point of being able to influence search results by doing something on a social platform is very easy to see when you're doing it inside a place like Google Plus. So that's sort of the thing that got me in, and then Hangouts, when, at early days, Hangouts were primarily private, meaning you could do a private video chat between you and up to nine other people, ten people total in the little room. And I thought that was pretty cool. But it's private. It's just there. It's not affecting search results. Now, I could make a video of it if I use third-party software, which I do. But the Hangout on Air tool wasn't out at that point. Later, fast forward a few more months, Hangouts on Air comes out. And I'm like, okay, I'm all over this because I do video search engine optimization. And I realize if I'm in a Hangout on Air and it's automatically creating a video for me on YouTube when I'm done, I can go optimize that. And I can do better than most because most people still, to this day, when they're done with their Hangouts on Air, don't go and juice it up with the proper optimization techniques. They either don't know how, or they don't think it's worth it, or they just don't think of it. I don't know. Right, right. I think of it because that's how I started. So from the very beginning, I've been able to get more traction on Hangout on Air videos than many, primarily because I just approach it with the perspective of a video search engine optimizer. And so as a result, I have been able to secure a relatively high position in the search engines when it comes to Hangout stuff. Now, a little of my background before any of this started, I used to do training for a living. I traveled all over the country for 12 years training people how to use technical software tools like Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, print things long before the internet was really that popular. Yep. And so as a result, I established abilities to do training so I could take technical concepts and narrow them down into words that the average person can understand. But at the same time, I can also talk techno geeky if I need to. And right. so that skill come along with video SEO ties into the Hangout tool so well, it's like they made it for me. That's basically my little story there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, it makes sense, obviously, for, you know, to move forward. Like, this is kind of the, the new stuff coming out, the Hangouts on Air, like, and the fact that, you know, now they can, you can do so much with it, and YouTube has obviously become massive over the years. Mm -hmm. It's the second largest search engine behind Google. Right. So yeah. Google's got one and YouTube's got two. So it's a pretty good place to be. Yeah. And because when you do these Hangouts on there, you're using both Google and YouTube together, it's, uh, it's a pretty compelling argument that this is the place to be. If you're trying to make video content that you're wanting to cause others to see, these are the tools to, to do it as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I know. I mean, and like like we talked before, I've been using the Hangouts for all of my interviews, and it's just been very seamless. I know most people who do interview shows, they're using Skype, and they're using a recorder mostly with Mac computers. Um, I happen to use a PC, so um, some of the software available to Macs was not available for the PC, so I ended up choosing the Hangouts because it was so seamless to integrate my videos right, you know, basically it uploads them right to YouTube as soon as we're done with this interview. Mm -hmm. And then all I have to do is make my edits and I'm ready to go. Yeah, so you, you, you can edit right online as well, or you can download the stuff from YouTube, do an edit on your computer, and then put it back up again if you like. Um, one thing that's really valuable from a video SEO perspective is you can, you can make lots of content. So we can have a 10, 20, 30 minute hangout and you can slice, slice that up into five different segments. And all of a sudden now you have one long one and you got four or five shorter ones that can be focused specifically on the topics that we talk about for that segment. Right. And then you've all, all of a sudden got one interview which turns into five different pieces of content that can be optimized each for that specific focus. So it's a pretty yeah. powerful way to do it. Yeah, true, true. I've been um, I've been actually doing what you what you mentioned. I've been uh, downloading the videos and then re-uploading them, um, mostly because I, I I muck something up with my channels. But besides the point, I like the fact that if I have it directly on YouTube, I can show the view count, as opposed to the Hangouts don't show the view count. That's true. They don't. Um, yeah. If you're the owner, you can see the view count. Right. Uh, but right. as far as the public, they don't let that be seen 
Um, there's been discussions about that for about a year and a half, and I'd like to see the view count. They're not showing it at this point. So, yeah. yeah. So I, know I, I know you can go and look at the analytics, and whoever owns the video, you can go and see who's, who's viewed, viewed what, but no one else can see that. Yeah, and there were little tricks that some of us discovered to figure out how to get an approximate idea of the view count, and YouTube's done a good job of killing those tricks, so it's pretty hard <laughs> to tell. Yeah, and, and that's kind of what they do. I mean, sometimes, for example, I recently discovered a trick that I don't think Google wanted me to know, and because I have enough traction on Google+, there was about 200 people that shared it within less than a day, yeah. Be, because it was such an important trick. And then within two days after my posting of it, Google shut it off. So it's like, <laughs> bummer. They bummer. caught on. Yeah. Well, they, they, they're basically saying, because w- what the trick was, it was the ability to do what you're, you and I are doing right now in a Hangout on Air, but let YouTube record it, which is what a normal Hangout on Air does, but yeah. let it be private. And that was the trick turning our live broadcast, which is going on publicly right now, into a private broadcast, per se, that YouTube does the recording for. They didn't want that known, that it was possible, and so they plugged right. the little hole that I figured out. <laughs> huh. I could see how a lot of people might really use something like that, too. You know, you could use that sure. for anything. But they, you get to use it for free, and I don't think they were all that happy about it. So mm. they, they're wanting it more public rather than private activity, I think, being recorded on YouTube. So they turned it off. That's what happens. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I can see that. Yeah. I, I'm hoping there's a brand new thing that they're coming out with called Help Outs. Help oh. Outs. And it's a version of Hangouts. They, it's... They recently announced it publicly, but it's not open to the public yet. It's one of those weird invitation-only scenarios right now. And it's, it's the ability to actually use a Hangout tool inside an environment that Google builds, which is involving scheduling and um, payment. This is the key, payment. Hmm. They're, they're using Google Wallet to process payment. So, for example, if you wanted to interview me and... I was going to give you some exclusive stuff. I'd say, I could do that, but I'm going to need to charge you for it. And you'll say, well, how do we do that? And I say, well, come into my help out. Boom, here we are. And I charge you X number of dollars a minute. You agree on that ahead of time, and we do the show, and there you go. So the ability for the world, seriously, to use Hangouts in the future with this help out feature and make an income from it is pretty amazing, and that's what's coming up pretty quick. Yeah, that sounds really cool. I could see a lot of people, um, I know like really one of the big players right now is when people do these big webinars that are doing the GoToMeeting, and a lot of times people will do like a 90% value webinar, and then at the end they always pitch their product or some sort of training or whatever it is they're doing, and then of course they bring you to a sales page. I mean, Google would take over if you could do all that and regulate it straight through the Hangouts, and then if they provided something better than what GoToMeeting's doing. I, I feel like I've seen people try to move away from the GoToMeeting, and um, it just doesn't seem to, a lot of people don't do it. And I think a lot of the other solutions that, that people try to look at, they're just too costly. So they seem to, that seems to be the biggest one I've found. Part of it is depending on who you travel, where, where your circles are. And in other words, who you're around. I yeah. actually am seeing the total opposite. I am in an environment which is Google+. I've trained a lot of people on how to use Hangouts well. Yeah. And so as a result, I'm frequently dealing or working with people that are leaving GoToMeeting and trying to figure out how do I make this Hangout on Air thing work properly within my environment of making a webinar. So I, every day, literally, am helping people that have left the GoToMeeting environment and are moving over to using the Hangout tool for multiple reasons. One, it's free. Okay, you're not paying 500 bucks a month or 150, whatever your rate is. Uh, the second thing is it's well, free. <laughs> you know, you just keep coming into the fact that it's free. So th- primarily there, the, there are some things GoToMeeting has that Hangouts don't. And there, I'm working with developers actually right now, hot and heavy with different developers to try to build those other pieces. And part of that has to do with the registration model, meaning how do you get people to sign up? How do you contact them independently of the tool so that you can follow them up, you know, do your follow-up after the fact? That's not built in. 
to the Hangout model. But there's plugins coming out. There's the ability to do Hangouts on Air through your own website. You can do Hangouts on Air on Facebook, which is a surprise for many people. Yeah. Um, you can do it right all. You can do it basically all over the place. And so the ability to get a registration system in with it that works is part of the missing piece. Yeah. And once that's done efficiently, then I'd say bye bye to go to meeting. It's pretty clear. Writing's on the wall. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like they're adding more and more with this, and it's developing itself. I noticed too that. Uh, I started these interviews um, back, I want to say, in March, and I think originally when I uploaded my video, I could not edit the title of my Hangout, and now I can once it's uploaded to YouTube. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. And actually, there's take. there's a brand new well, brand new is relative. I'm I'm up on this stuff all the time. So yeah, <laughs> within the last two weeks or so, something like that, um, they've added the ability for people that have YouTube channels that have more than 100, 100 subscribers. It used to be 1,000 was the limit, now it's just 100. So if you have 100 subscribers or more on your YouTube channel, you have access to another tool in YouTube's arsenal of tools, and this one's called YouTube Live Events. And what the Live Events is, in contrast to Hangouts on Air, the Live Events is usually a one-to-many broadcast. So it's one person broadcasting out to the world. Yep. Whereas Hangouts on Air are sort of the consumerized version of that where you can have lots of people interacting in this film strip thing on the bottom but also be broadcasting live to the world. So they both broadcast live and this live thing is pretty cool for most people. And the difference primarily is whether you're a techno geek or you're just an average person. If you're more techno geeky, this YouTube Live actually gives you more capability, more power, more quality resolution, more, more, more. If you're the average person, even the average people are having difficulty with some of the complexities of a Hangout on Air, um, I help them make sure that they do a good job with it. But what I was leading to is this. When the YouTube Live thing came out, I looked over there, and I see that when I'm doing a Hangout on Air, I can actually go into the YouTube Live, what's called the editor, and edit my Hangout on Air live. In other words, I can edit my title, I can edit my description, I can edit my tags. These are all things important to a video SEO guy right. or person. I can edit that even before I go live because I'm in what's called the green room when I start my Hangout on Air. Right. I can Before I hit the start broadcast button, I can move over to the YouTube live editor, edit the title if I made a boo-boo, edit the description text, which was not possible prior, edit the tags, and then hit the start broadcast button. So while it's live... It's fully juiced up with all the video SEO from the get-go. And that, that'll probably make sense because now if you've got people looking in the, you know, just in general searching on YouTube or anywhere, then they're that much more likely to find your, you know, find your live video. Yeah, yeah. So the, the latest project that I'm doing, um, and I'm going to change this thing down here called the lower third. Right now it says the Hangout Helper. Yep. Um, I'm going to turn on a version of the Hangout Helper, and that's this. It's, uh, it's called Hangout Mastery. So I've built an environment where people, if they want to really get into the details of the how, how to make the stuff work, they can join into the membership site. We just launched it, so I'm in the mode of what's called charter membership pricing. And it's pretty cool. Uh, the reason why I think it's cool isn't just because it's me, <laughs> although that, that's <laughs> awesome, um, but the fact that I'm using multiple tools to do this. The way I make this work is we've got a regular membership site, and many of you probably know what that means. You pay money, you get monthly access to stuff, um, and that's behind a paywall, basically. That's, there's nothing new about that. I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying that's the way it's been there for a while. What's new in the way that I'm trying to make this awesome for people is I'm also tying it to a Google Plus private community. So if you're a member of the membership site, you're then automatically a member of the Google Plus community. And in that community, I hang out. I just did one today. I'm just meet and greet yeah, everybody yeah. that's there. And then when it's time, we're, we're voting right now, actually, on what are the topics that, we want everybody, that everybody wants to have discussed. So we go deep into those topics, and I'll make a private video recording of our session and when I'm done with it, I upload it into the membership site. 
so that those that weren't able to be in the film strip and ask the questions directly, they can watch and learn as a member. So it's a hybrid, in essence, of using, instead of a forum within a website, I'm using Google Plus communities in the private realm and taking what I make there and bringing it back into the website, which is, I think, pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it totally makes sense. I feel like a lot of people are so strongly um, big on, like, the Facebook groups these days. It seems to be the big thing is what I've noticed. I've just, everybody seems to be doing, like, a lot of these groups or membership sites, a lot of people end up going with the Facebook groups. But, I, you know, I've looked at a lot of the Google stuff, and I think a lot of it's really cool, like what some of the stuff you can do with um, with the Google fan pages and things like that. And just Yeah, my... My big deal about Google is the uh, Google Plus is the fact that it's tied so intricately to Google.com. And again, because of my background with search, I can have the best stuff in the world out there, but if you never know about it because you never know how to find it, it's not going to do me any good. So right. I, I use the value of Google Plus so that I can end up ranking well in Google.com when people are searching for certain topics. And I can't do that when I'm in Facebook because Facebook's data doesn't efficiently come into the google.com search engines for two reasons. One, Facebook won't let it. <laughs> and, and two, um, Google's decided, eh, we got enough of our own. We don't need to try to dig that out. We're going to just let the stuff that's going on in our Google world show up. So yeah. in my mind as a marketer, if you're listening out there, um, here's the easy way to explain it. If Google is important to your business, Think about how Google Plus is spelled and take it from there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I just set up my, uh, I actually just set up a week ago my, my Google Plus uh, business page, and I linked that to, to my website and got all that stuff like linked together and made sure all that was set because I realized that's going to be important for, you know, how Google views my, my web page and, you know, setting up authorship and everything to do with... Uh, that you know, basically making Google happy, so I yeah. um, people can find me. There was even in the early days of Google Plus, they've kind of backed off a little on it. Um, in the early days of Google Plus, they were giving you hints as to how to do things, so right. that Google, Google would be happy. And so that's as close as you get to the playbook on how to video or how to SEO search engine optimize your stuff. Yeah. They would actually give hints. Me being aware of all these little tidbits, I'd actually make a post about it and then eventually they take away some of the hints because people start to game the system a little bit. But it's, it's very feasible and very possible to use Google Plus to add a good, strong social signal so that Google.com cares about what you're doing. And just for the, because I have a feeling a lot of your viewers or listeners are, are um, primarily involved in the Facebook world. Let me really, really help you. If you're going to come over to Google+, Plus, it will be a ghost town for you if you don't use it properly. Mm. In other words, if you use it like you use Facebook, it ain't going to work. It's a different animal. And a lot of people aren't willing to adopt or adapt, and as a result, they'll leave and say it's a stupid place. And as far as I'm concerned, go away. I don't need you or don't want you. <laughs> yeah. because, because it gives me a stronger hold in this environment. I don't need the extra competition. But if... Right. If you're willing to come over and do it what I call right or correct, then you're going to get some real value out of it. And for your sake of your viewers and listeners, here's what, how you do it right. You go, or let me back up and do the contrast. In Facebook, it's about who you know. You connect with who you know, and then you meet other people based on who they know. And it just goes on and on like that. In Google+, it's based on what you know. Not who, but what. Because a lot of people come over, they say, they say my friends aren't there. Uh, why do I want to be here? Um, well, it's because you need to meet new people based on what they know. So if you come into Google Plus and you look for the what, you will find the who behind the what, and then you become connected with those people, and all of a sudden your connections are not based on the fact that you knew somebody, but it's based on the fact that both of you have a similar interest Right. We're talking about the same stuff, and that matters to Google, which it has to do with authority. It has to do with relevancy, and these are technical terms. But if I find somebody that talks about video search engine optimization on Google+, we both 
can interact in an area that Google says these guys knows what they're talking about. Let's interact and allow their stuff to surface higher and higher in search because it's not just Ronnie knows John and John knows Ronnie, but both Ronnie and John know video SEO. Therefore, their conversations are more important to people looking for video SEO. Yeah, I mean, it makes total sense where, you know, just kind of linking all those things together. It almost kind of sounds like, in a way, it's like the social aspect of linking one relevant website to another. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so what's, what's really pretty cool but challenging for many people is when they first show up inside Google+, Plus, they don't know anybody. And if they're not willing to seek out who is the influencer in that space, then they're not going to see much activity. But if they do reach out to someone with some base, let's say someone wants to learn about Hangouts as an example, because that's one of the hot topics. Um, you'll find me, because I'm well known in the Hangout realm. And so if you eventually see me, and you see that there's a fair amount of activity with what I post on, and you start interacting with me, and you start sharing my stuff, I will take notice, because I'm not blind to that. I watch. Right, right. And so when I notice something and then you add a decent comment to a post that I've done or you do a reshare of something that I did and you, you add some extra good quality stuff on it, I will say, you know what, this guy's cool. I'm going to pay attention to him. I start adding you to my circle so I can watch what you're doing. And then all of a sudden we both benefit from this new relationship that never would have happened if you were just looking for your friends instead of the topic. So that's why I simply say the easiest way to make it work is start with the what, then you'll find the who, and then you do the normal social stuff you're doing anyway on Facebook, right. and it will then benefit you in the search results. So there's the little one, two, three equation, and there you go. Cool, cool. Now, I really haven't, I mean, myself, I, I've kind of dabbled into, like, Google Plus in general. I know that I've heard there can be some weight carried um, in terms of SEO when you have... Um, I guess a higher like uh, group of circles, like people that are in your circles and people that you've associated with, and that can supposedly help your search engine rankings. Yeah. But, um, do you have any particular sources? Like, let's say someone is, you know, at this point they're listening to this interview and they're like really kind of thinking to myself, well, maybe I need to get more involved in Google Plus, and um, you know, I want to get started with that. Like, is there any? particular websites or places that um, resources, training materials, things that maybe they could um, use to get them started, like to get going with Google Plus and make the most of it for their websites or businesses? Sure. There are tons of people and information out there that will help you learn how to do this thing on Google Plus. For example, me, I'm one of them. I constantly, I'm not just posting about Hangouts, I also post about Google Plus and Google Plus tips, things that are changing and why it matters. And I usually come at it from a flavor of marketing and not just marketing, but SEO, search engine optimization, or SEM, search engine marketing. Um, and what you're saying is correct. When you are connected with people that, according to Google, have higher authority, it raises you up as well. Yeah. And one easy way to see that happen is if any of your vis visitors or listeners or people know a thing that's called, you ever heard of page rank? Is that a term you're familiar with, page rank? Yeah, yeah I did a whole... Um I did a pretty advanced uh, interview with someone where we talked, we dug real deep into expired domains and SEO ranking, so it was like totally like an advanced. Okay, well let me simplify it. Page rank is one way that Google says this is important. If you have a higher number, then you're going to show up higher in search results based on what you're talking about if it's relevant to the topic that you are ranked for with your page rank. Yep. Here's, here's the secret. It's not really a secret, but most people don't realize it. My profile page on Google Plus has a page rank. It's like it's its own website. My, my business page on Google Plus has its own page rank. My community that I build inside Google Plus has multiple page ranks because within the community there are multiple categories. Yep. Each of the categories has its own page rank. So right. this page rank thing is rather awesome because this is totally how Google gives or measures authority. And so here's here's a trick or an idea. <laughs> it's not a trick. It's just a, it's a it's a documented method that works. If you go to Google Plus and you find the people that are talking about the topics you're interested in 
and then you determine that they have a community about that topic, you should go become involved in that community because then your interaction in the community, their page rank rubs off on you. And then you grow in your knowledge as well as your interaction in that community. And then all of a sudden the guys or gals running the community pay attention to you a little bit more. And then there's more interaction between you and them. And then you become more influential. So communities are one of the best places inside Google Plus to learn who's interested in the topic discussed in the community and then grow from there and you can identify the folks. And one very powerful community that I'm, I'll, full disclosure, I'm one of the moderators for it, meaning I help manage it and things. Yep. It's called Plus Your Business. It's primarily made for people that are wanting to use Google Plus as a business and see what value they can get out of it that way. So Plus Your Business is one of the communities that I would encourage people that are new to go check out. Um, if you're at all interested in what we're doing right now, this Hangout thing, the Hangout on Air, I have a community called Hangout Helpers. It ties in with the Hangout Helper. You know, it's yeah. all yeah. part of the branding thing. Makes sense. And you can go in there and it's free. Um, and learn about Hangouts. I mean, I've got tons of stuff in there, and it's not just me, but there's other people interacting and helping. Even some of the Google engineers are coming in and out of there answering questions when I ask for additional help and things like that. And if you want the deep dive, meaning when people first start with Hangouts, they need to understand why. Why do I care? Why do I need it? Why do I want it? Yeah. A lot of people are making money helping you learn the why. I'm not, that's great, let them do it. I'm good with that. My job primarily is to help you learn the how. So once you've learned the why and you have your own use case and you can really understand why you need it, you're going to then need to know how to do it well. And right. if that's you, you might consider coming into the community that I've built, which is a paid membership community. And right now the charter pricing is 37 bucks a month. And yeah. I was just going to say I'll, I'll gladly put a link in the show notes for yeah. anyone who wants to check that out. And it's been open. You're kind of new to you're new to me and new to the. Well, it's all brand new. It's yeah. I've been working on it for a while, but it's been open probably two three days now. Oh. And wow. the people that are in there are saying, man, within the very first hour of the first day, it was well over the thirty seven dollars. Why this is cool. Yeah. And so the the stuff that I'm putting in there, it's not that it's not. It's not that I don't talk about it elsewhere. I just go to a deeper level yeah. in that environment because that's where I know people are wanting to know that deep, what I call the deep dive into the details. Um, and one reason why, and this is not just to market me, but to, uh, to help everybody, whether you work it with me or not, I don't really care. Just find yeah. a way to make, uh, do a good job with what you're doing. Because yeah. here's the bottom, bottom, bottom line. Your online reputation matters. Most people don't think about that. But this web thing is becoming so ubiquitous. It's showing up everywhere and anything you do is being watched and ranked in one way or another. So if you start with the Google Plus Hangout tool and you make a, a fool of yourself because you don't know, you know what you're doing and it looks really bad and it's nasty yeah, by yeah. the time you're done, you just made a problem for yourself that now you have to try to recover from. Okay, and I'm not trying to say it to scare people. I'm simply pointing out this is the reality. Google is watching you their big yeah. brother, okay? Social signals matter, and when you put a signal out saying, he's a nice guy, but he doesn't really know what he's doing, that means the next time people aren't so, the, your authority level is lower now. And it gets lower and lower and lower every time you mess up. So the point here is if you can, come out kicking. You know, come out really strong, and you start from a, a level point and start going up instead of, level and go down and then have to recover to get back up. So that's one reason I, I've made this community and whether you join in with that or not, you know, there's plenty of other people that maybe can help you. If you like my training style, I can help you for sure. And so just make sure you try to do this right because it's for your reputation and your reputation does matter. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, and this is kind of the future, you know, obviously Google is is doing more and more, and this is just going to keep growing. The, the mm -hmm. you know, this tool is changing drastically, obviously, as the years gone, gone by, and some of the things that they're starting to implement. And obviously, like you're saying, you know, now, now they've made a change, so they have that whole what you called it, what YouTube Live, it's it's called. 
Yeah. Well, YouTube Live's been out there, but it's been very limited as to who had access to it. Right, right. They just opened the floodgates, in my opinion, because if you just have a hundred... For some, you know, a hundred seems like a lot, but it's really not. You can get a hundred subscribers relatively easily. Yeah. And so they've opened it up to the entire world, in my opinion, to use YouTube Live. What I do is I do a hybrid, okay? I will use Hangouts on Air, yep. and I'll go into the YouTube Live environment and use the value of the editor there and add extra value to my Hangout on Air even before I hit the Start Broadcast button. Cool, cool. Yeah, that's something that, that uh, I'll have to like leave a link so maybe people can like go and learn more about that because that sounds like it would be really useful for a lot of people as well. Certainly, certainly. So, I mean, um, I don't know, did you want to, I know we talked a little bit about maybe doing like a screen share. I don't know if you wanted to kind of show some of the things that like you've been doing with your communities and some of the things that you teach. And um, Yeah, we can do a, a quick quickie here. Let's, let sure. me get to um, here. This is one of the options of the Hangout tool is you can actually show your computer and show stuff on your computer. So this is, this is my primary website, which is called thehangouthelper.com. And in it, um, I, I have a services page. So if you're wanting to learn about Hangouts, you can go right to that. And we can do one-on-one -on -one sessions. But what I've also got is some of my recent Google Plus postings show up here. And on the bottom right, we have some of my more recent Hangouts, Hangouts on Air, or ones that I'm involved with. But because of the brand new thing, I've got this big button in the middle that says sign up now. You know, this monthly membership, we just launched it. So let me move over to what that looks like. And when you land on it, it's right here, Hangout Mastery. And there's a public side to it, and that's what you land on. So you have the ability to check out FAQs, frequently asked questions about the membership stuff. You can sign up right away, of course, right? Or you can look around and say, okay, here's four example videos. Let's see if this guy knows what he's talking about and if I can learn from him. So these are all free. You just click them and play them. This one's 12 minutes. This one's 8 minutes. The one below it is 36 minutes. This is when you're deciding you're real serious about this. And uh, this one's 13 minutes. So there's, I don't know, an hour plus worth of video content right there. Yeah. And if you decide that makes sense for you, then, you know, you go ahead and sign up. So if you're signed up, then you also get access to this next thing, which I'm going to show briefly. This is a private community inside Google+. You'll see on the upper left, it's we're in the Google+, Plus area. This is the Hangout Mastery. You won't be able to see this unless you're a member, but we're doing a, a sneak preview here. And in here, we've got a list of the different categories. Remember I told you that things rank or have page rank based on their categories. This is a private community, so I'm actually hiding it from the search engines. But, um, for example, this was a topic someone or a bunch of people today were saying they need help when they're using Google Plus as a brand page or what Facebook calls a fan page or just a page. When you're doing that, there are some technical issues that are a little bit, a little bit challenging when you're doing your own Hangout and Error. So what I did is I just did a four-step. These are the four important things to make sure that you're doing your Hangout on Errors properly as a page, and these are right there. So they asked for it today, so I gave it today. We're going to do a whole course on this, but some people were saying, look, I have a show tomorrow. <laughs> I need to know now. And so I just basically boiled it down to the four most important things to deal with getting invitations if you're trying to run a Hangout on Error. So that's just one of the topics that we did today. This one... Um, Right here is another example of a live video that I did that was public. And there's some pretty cool things you can do with these posts, which many people don't know. Is Since these Hangout on Airs get a little long, this one was about 50 minutes, um, you know, just shy of an hour. We broke this down into very easily clickable uh, indexes. So I can index each and every part of the main topics of the Hangout on Air. And you can click on those, and it'll just start playing that particular portion right there. So it makes these videos and the posts about those videos very, very valuable in the long run. And they'll have some traction long, long after it's over. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. I didn't realize that you could do the, um, you could split the video up so people can just go right into the sections like that. That's really awesome. Yeah, and that is an example of what I call, I have multiple communities on Google+. Plus. One is the Hangout Helpers. Yep. Then there's the private one that we were just talking about, Hangout Mastery. But there's another one I made a while ago called GooTube Plus. 
Google Plus, and it stands for Google and YouTube and Google Plus all together. Right, yeah. right. And so this is an example. I can make a YouTube video post inside Google Plus and type yep. in time codes, and it stays right there inside Google Plus. When I hit a time code, it just plays a video right there in Google Plus and jumps from spot to spot to spot all right there or I could jump over to YouTube if I wanted to, but because it's all integrated in one place, you know, it's not a bad thing to do right there. Yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty cool. I, I really like hearing about all this because this is all very new to me, and I feel like it, it just seems like a lot of people that at least I've kind of come across in, you know, in terms of like anything to do with general blogging or online marketing, a lot of people really don't seem to be diving into some of this stuff very much. You know, it's very basic. People are just sort of, you know, they've created their Google Plus pages and they've done some of that. I mean, I know if you go on some websites like Fiverr, you know, there's some pretty big um, people in some of these social media communities where you can find people doing big th bigger things with Google Plus, but it just yeah. seems like in general, I, I guess it's more in, like you said earlier, kind of who you're surrounding yourself. Yeah, who you surround yourself with, honestly, yeah. I, I've come to the point where I, uh, how would you say it politely, I find what works yeah. and I work with that rather than the crowd. And so if the crowd says nothing's going on over there, but I have found it to be otherwise, I politely leave that crowd and I move into the environment that actually is working for me. Right. Now, I'm, I'm not trying to, please don't hear me as slamming Facebook and the crowd that says Google Plus is bad or is nothing's going on there. I have, let's see what my number is, and this is going to sound like I'm bragging, but let me just see what the numbers are today. I have some large number of people following me, so to say that it's a... Uh, it's a couple thousand, I think, plus, what I saw, right? Um, it's, I forget, let's just look at what the numbers are today. I think it's close to 54,000. Oh, wow. So, let's see if I can get to the top of the page here. Uh, fifty, yeah, fifty-four thousand plus today. So, to say that there's nobody there, well, there's fifty-four thousand nobodies that happen to think that what I'm talking about is of value. So, you know, it's yeah. I mean, and I know that I looked at um, there was an infographic I came across weeks ago that had like, I think it said it. I forget exactly, but it, it basically stressed the point of that there's a huge number of people on Google Plus, and that at the time was kind of like, wow, like where, you know, it just seems like it's all where you hang out, you know, because... Well, and that's the secret. I mean, the secret is I already gave the secret. It's it's not who you know, it's what. So if yeah. you find, look for the what, you're going to find the who, and then it becomes like you would expect a social environment, but you start with the topic, not the people, per se. And another thing that really skews the numbers for against, let's put it this way, it skews the numbers against Google+. Here's why. When I'm in Facebook, everything I do by default is public. So my activity is publicly seen, publicly measured, publicly documented in a sense. When I'm in Google+, by default, everything is private. So I actually have to make an effort to make it publicly seen. And so as a result, the average person on Facebook does everything public because they don't know any better. And right. when they get a little better, then they start doing more private stuff. Okay? When it's, flip it on its ear, you're now in Google+. Plus. Yep. The average person does everything private. And then when they get a little bit more in, uh, educated about it, then they start getting into the public realm. So the numbers are skewed against measuring the actual real activity inside Google+. Plus because the majority of it's done in the private realm, which is not measurable. You can't get right. to that. Right. So, and, and I can say this for sure easily publicly because the guy that's in charge of all these Hangouts said it publicly, and so because of that, I can repeat it. Yeah. He said there are more than, a, he calls it decades, worth of Hangouts going on every single day. Wow. So I would translate decades to mean maybe 20 years or more of Hangout activity every single day. The majority of it is private. Okay, there's a good portion of it that's public, but the majority is private. These are Hangout meetings. I and I, I'm an easy example. I meet with three to five. Well, that's probably two clients on average every day, and yep. three or four other communication things that aren't necessarily clients. 
through Hangouts on a daily basis. So I'm one of those that runs 10, 12 Hangouts every single day. I mean, it just happens. And right. the, the thing that's amazing to me is I do it right from my office, which is in my home. I have a home office. That's where yeah. I work. And so I get up and go to my office. I don't have to deal with the traffic. I don't have to park. I don't have to, you know, all that <laughs> stuff. So, and then what's really awesome to me, these Hangouts allow me, and just like you're doing, you're doing an interview, I could interview someone all over, anywhere in the world. You know, it, it doesn't matter. It, it just has to deal with time zones, and that's one reason why I stay up in the middle of the night, because I'm talking with people in Malaysia sometimes, or Hong Kong, or, I'm sorry, not Hong Kong, because they have an issue with Hangouts. Um, Malaysia is easy, Australia, then I go into the UK realm, and then I'm back into the US, and so it's, honestly, it's sometimes I'm like, where are you? And they say, oh, yes, I'm here, and it's three in the morning there, and it's only two in the afternoon here. It's, you get, you kind of lose track. And right. one way I know this is an issue <laughs> is when someone says, when can we meet? And I'm like, tell me your time zone, so I'll have a clue of when it's appropriate time for you and me to meet, because otherwise it's like, I'll throw out a time, and it's it's 1.30 in the morning at your time. It may not be an appropriate time. Right, and that's that's what I was running into with the, uh, I, when I, if you noticed, I sent you a link, and then it shows all my availability, and it's been like a lifesaver using... Um, yeah, your scheduler tool is pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, it's, a, it's actually free, too. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, if you're scheduling anything with anyone, and they happen to be in different time zones, there's a website called, it's literally called scheduleonce.com, and it's... They do have paid plans. Um, the paid stuff is kind of more for like follow-up and advanced features. But um, all I did was I I basically used to do what you were doing. I would reach out to people and say, well, "What time are you available?" And I there were two problems with this. One being that um, when trying to meet up with people, um, and this could be anything; it doesn't have to be an interview. They're very kind of flaky about the time they're trying to meet, and I can't get a solid answer. And it's just sort of like, "Yeah, let's do it next week." Or, you know, if I get this thing, like, booked, then at least, like, it's a set-in-stone time. They're going to get an email. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everything's very easy. So what I did with, with Ronnie for this interview that we're doing right now, I literally sent him a link. It, uh, I put in all the times that I was available because I have a, a, I have a 9 to 5 job, so I just set the times outside of that range when I'd be free. You know, left myself some time to sleep in on Saturdays. <laughs> and then I, uh, when he goes to the link, he can pick three times, a 45-minute time slot, and then he just picks those times, and I reply back with one of the three, and then we met up, and he was able to do that last night, and now here we are, 10 o'clock at night, uh, at least for me, 10 o'clock. I don't know your time zone. I'm in Eastern, and that was the thing. I don't even know what time zone you're in. I just knew you picked 10 o'clock my time, and that's all I needed to know. Yep, it works. I'm in Colorado, so I'm in Mountain Time. Yeah, so you're a couple hours. So what is it? Uh, it's, 11 it's almost here, so. almost nine here, and it should be almost eleven where you are. Yeah. yeah, almost eleven. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I like so much about this tool. So anyone who wants to schedule anything, I would suggest checking out Schedule Once. But it's um, Schedule Once dot com, right? Yep. Schedule Once dot com. Cool. Yeah, I've looked at actually a few schedulers, and I'm trying to find one that'll inter integrate very efficiently with Google Hangouts because that's how I do most of my meetings and that's still sort of a a problem or a, a, a missing link right. and I think that's partly why it's you know partly why it's a missing link I think is because Google's coming out with a product that does it yeah <laughs> and yeah. so they're not making it very easy or even possible for others to integrate them and I think that's partly why is because of this help out thing that's just come out visibly because it's got a scheduler as part of it I think. I think there is a website I originally found called Schedule. I want to say it's called like ScheduleHangouts.com. It was something real simple. If you search Google, you'll find it. Like, mm -hmm. but um. Yeah, there's tools out there. Just none of them do what I want. I have a very specific use case. I use a, right. a tool within Google Plus called Events, the Google Plus Events tool. Incredibly powerful tool. Um, but we don't have time to talk about that right yeah. now. But the event tool, in essence, is the place to meet. For, especially for a private hangout. I use it for public things as well, but primarily for private because it integrates so seamlessly with people's calendars. It's amazing, amazing the way it works. Cool, cool. Yep. All right, well, um, I'd say, you know, we've been we've been uh, on for all, nearly an hour, and we shared, you know, you shared a lot of great information. I'd say for anyone who's interested, you know, definitely, um, you know, if you're not on 
Google Plus or you're not using Google Hangouts, you know, like I said, I'm using the Hangouts for all my interviews. It's working really well for me. And, um, you know, if you're not using these tools, you should definitely spend some time with it and connect with, with uh, Ronnie if you'd like to learn more about them. Because I actually found, the reason I even found Ronnie in the first place was because I was lost on something and I found one of his tutorials when I was searching around Google. There you go. Yeah. So it's working. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess uh, I guess we'll wrap things up and... Uh, I'll put all the links in the show notes to your, your websites and your membership page, and people can check that out. Fantastic. Thanks for the opportunity, John. Yeah, thanks.